I sold my home theater. It's all gone. Well, sort of. I sold all my floor speakers and right now I'm running a Franken system. Let's talk about it. So today you guys are going to find out what speakers I switched to after selling the Klipsch. I've been hinting that it's a real curveball. And it is. And just for you guys, and the interest of keeping this video short, I'm going to reveal it to you right now. Drum roll please. And the speakers that I switched to is... Bose! That's right. On the internets, I always see those memes. Great highs, great lows, must be Bose. Well, I wanted to experience that for my... What's that? No highs, no lows, must be Bose. Well, that... That doesn't sound all right. Oh, well... Well, that's not at all what I wanted. I feel like highs and lows are an important part of the sound in a home theater. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I feel like maybe... Maybe I should have gone with something else. Maybe with at least a little bit of highs and maybe a little bit of lows. But now I'm stuck with Bose. Okay, okay, I didn't really go with Bose as you can tell from my great special effects. For all you Bose owners out there, it was just a joke. I didn't make the memes. It was all in fun. Please don't hate me. Oh man, I can see the comments now. Anyway, it was just a joke guys, all in fun. But don't worry, it's not all clickbait. I am gonna be unboxing a new speaker and it really is a curveball. Even I didn't expect myself to do this until the very last second. So make sure you stay tuned. I'm gonna be explaining it all in this video. I'm Barrett and this is Speca Tech. Welcome to the channel. For those of you that may not have been following along, I recently sold my Klipsch RP8000F left, center, and right speakers. I also sold my Klipsch RP502S side surround speakers, and I'm currently waiting on a buyer to come pick up my rear surrounds, which are the Klipsch RF62 twos. The original plan was actually for me to go with a PowerSound Audio 7 channel setup, but I'll explain to you why I didn't in just a moment. But first, let's reveal what I actually did get this time. So as you can see from the box beside me, the seven channel speakers that I decided to go with are SVS. So I'm gonna be going with an ultra tower for the left and right. I'm gonna be going with the ultra surrounds for my side surrounds. And I'm gonna be going with the prime pinnacles for my rear surrounds. Uh, and the center channel right now is up for debate. If I go with the prime pinnacle, I can leave my system as is, just move it in and plug it in. Uh, if I do wanna go with an ultra, which I'm considering, then I have to raise my TV up and probably move my audio racks because of those side firing eight inch drivers. Uh, I can't have an audio rack on either side because that's gonna mess with that. But I can hear everybody scratching their head all at once, wondering why. I could have went with PSA, I could have went with JTR, I could have went with some of the bigger name brands uh, for home theater. Uh, not that SVS isn't a great name brand, but it may not seem like a huge upgrade going from my Klipsch RP8000Fs to these. And you're thinking to yourself, well, why Barrett? Why would you do that? Well, we're gonna to get to that in a bit. And as you can see in the frame, uh, I have already got the Prime Pinnacles and I've been using those for about a week now. Uh, and I, I am liking them so far, I am liking them, but the SVS Ultras are gonna be my left and right. So right now I just had the Pinnacles as my left and right because I had gotten rid of my RP8000Fs. But let's get into this box. I've waited long enough. I'm just gonna open the one for you guys. I don't think there's much of a point of opening two of the exact same thing. It's just kind of a waste of time. I might as well just show you one of them. And I'm pretty sure you know that the other one's gonna look exactly like it. So let's get into this box. guys there you have it the SVS ultra tower in piano gloss black I must say my first impression is the speaker does look very beautiful the finish is so nice um, I did like the look of my Klipsch RP 8000 F's but this does kind of take things to a new level uh, it is very minimalistic as far as color goes but that shiny gloss black is just 
it looks very nice. All right, guys, so I'm going to grab my camera. I'm going to get some more close-ups of the Ultra Tower as well as the Pinnacle Tower. And just an FYI, uh, my SVS Ultra surrounds are delayed uh, because they didn't have any gloss black. So my side surrounds are going to be here probably the end of October or the beginning of November. So unfortunately, I do have to wait for those. But in the meantime, let's cover the pinnacles and the towers. All right, so now that we've unboxed the SVS Ultra Tower, now may be a good time to consider subscribing and maybe tick the bell icon so you'll be notified about my future videos. Keep in mind, I do have a unique, at the moment, one of a kind 24 inch subwoofer on the way. Uh, should actually be here within the next few weeks and you're gonna wanna see it. So I'm interested to hear what you guys think as well. Have you switched from Klipsch to SVS or from SVS to Klipsch? Leave your comments down below. And what are your thoughts on Klipsch versus SVS? Let's keep it polite and courteous, but drop your comments down below as well. And I would also greatly appreciate if you would hit that like button. So first of all, guys, I must admit the SVS Ultra Tower is beautiful. It really does make for a very nice looking speaker. And for those that may have been wondering, I do have the Prime Pinnacles already unboxed. I didn't want to make the video too long with a bunch of unboxings, but I do have a pair of Prime Pinnacles in Black Ash, which eventually will get moved to rear surround duty. And I just want to give a shout out to Amir at Summit Hi-Fi. That is where I purchased all these speakers. So for those of you in Canada that are interested in purchasing SVS, I've linked Summit Hi-Fi's website down below in the description. And for those of you in the US that are interested in SVS products, I've also dropped some links down below in the description for you as well. All right, so why did I switch from Klipsch to SVS? Well, we're gonna get to that in just a second. First, let's do a quick overview of the Prime Pinnacles as well as the SVS Ultra Tower. So let's start with the Pinnacles. I got the Pinnacles in black ash as they will end up being my rear surrounds and there was no need for them to be shiny gloss black because I do have a curtain back there that covers them anyway, so there's no need for them to be really pretty. The Pinnacles are a three-way design with one five and a quarter inch mid-range driver, a one inch aluminum dome tweeter, and three 6.5 inch woofers. The listed frequency response is 29 hertz to 25 kilohertz. Hertz. It is an 8 ohm impedance and it has a sensitivity rating of 88 dB and it is rated for 20 to 300 watts. Each speaker is 41.1 inches high, 8 inches wide, and 13.9 inches deep, and those measurements include the grill, feet, and binding posts. And each one weighs 51 pounds. All right, so moving along to the Ultra Towers. I had to get the Ultras in black gloss. I mean, come on, that finish is just absolutely gorgeous. But for those of you that don't like glare, it's probably not going to be the best choice. So you may want to go with the black ash on the towers. But man, that gloss black looks so good. The dimensions are actually a little bit tricky here because of the unconventional shape of the Ultra Towers. Uh, so the measurements will be at their widest and at their deepest points. I will say, although their shape could make it awkward for some people to place them, I do like it. It's a nice change from the traditional rectangle speaker. So the Ultra Dimensions are 45.6 inches high, 13.8 inches wide, and 16.8 inches deep, and that's with the grill. Uh, and they weigh 75 pounds each. SVS made the Ultra Towers a 3.5 way crossover design with dual 6.5 inch mid-range drivers, a one inch aluminum dome tweeter, and an interesting fact here, the tweeter in the Pinnacle and the Ultra is actually identical, but the crossovers are different. And then the Ultra Tower has dual eight inch woofers on either side towards the bottom of the speaker. And it's those side firing woofers that uh, make it difficult for me to integrate the Ultra as a center speaker because of my audio racks, and that's where the complication lies. The frequency response is 28 hertz to 32 kilohertz, and it is an 8 ohm impedance with a sensitivity rating of 88 decibels, and the Ultras, just like the Pinnacles, are rated for 20 to 300 watts. All right, that covers the overview. Obviously, I'm gonna give a lot more details in the review when I do the review, so stay tuned for those. All right, I think you guys have waited long enough. I know there's some of you out there right now that are thinking to yourself, Barrett, what are you thinking? Why would you go from Klipsch to SVS? It's a lateral move. Some people think it's a downgrade. Some people think it's an upgrade, but why? Why did you do that? You could have went to PSA. You could have went to JTR. You could have had a huge step up. Let's discuss it. I'm personally feeling like this is a lateral move for me to move from the Klipsch to the SVS, but let's discuss why I made this decision. So let's start from the beginning. For those of you that don't know, I do have several Facebook groups uh, that I started regarding home theater and audio. I've linked those down in the description below if you're interested in joining, and if you're interested in following me on Instagram, I've linked that down below as well. But one day in my moderator chat, um, we like to razz each other. I owned Klipsch, my buddy John V owned SVS, so we always razz each other about which one's better, but it's all in fun. So 
he actually sold his SVS setup to move to a JTR setup, and I was in the middle of selling my clip speakers to move to a PSA setup. So jokingly, we were already discussing what we would upgrade to because you know we're always upgrading. Uh, so some of the other mods were giving us a rough time about how long are we gonna keep the JTR and PSA before we upgrade. But my buddy John had an interesting question, and he said, what would I upgrade to after JTR? And of course, subjectively, there are some speakers that you could move up to. Some people may consider it an upgrade, some wouldn't. It all depends on your personal preference, but obviously there is some things that you could move to. But it got me to thinking, okay, so I buy PSA speakers, which are, you know, a highly regarded speaker. No, they're not crazy expensive, but for a home theater, they are widely regarded as a great speaker. Uh, so I'm thinking to myself, what would I upgrade to? And yeah, of course, I guess I could move to JTR after that, but then again, once I'm at JTR, where do I go? So this literally all happened uh, while I was minutes away from purchasing PSA. I had my invoice, all I needed to do was grab my card and punch in my payment details and pay for the speakers. But it really got me to thinking, what am I gonna do once I'm at this level? I'm never gonna wanna go back down to SVS speakers once I have these PSA speakers or I move to JTR speakers that are widely regarded as like end game cinema speakers. I'm never gonna wanna go back down to these other brands and I want to experience these other brands. And I've said this before in previous videos, I'm the type of guy that likes to experience things for myself. I like to experiment with other brands, other speakers, other designs. Um, and I just didn't wanna give that up just yet. I don't wanna be close to end game just yet. I've personally always been curious how Klipsch and SVS stack up against each other. And I wanted to take this opportunity to experience that for myself experiment for myself so that I have first-hand knowledge for myself what the two sound like and which one I prefer. And of course, you guys have been really great in supporting the channel. My channel is growing. Uh, maybe I get to the point where some of these manufacturers are gonna send me their speakers for review without me having to pay for them, but I'm never gonna assume I'm gonna get to that point. If I do get there, I'm gonna be really appreciative, but at the same time, who knows? So at this point in time, I want to experience these speakers for myself uh, without having to wait and see in the future, maybe I would get sent them for free to review. Because this is actually part of the hobby that I really enjoy. I like getting different brands and different speakers in my setup and playing with them and hearing them for myself. It's actually one of my favorite parts of this hobby. Hence why I'm constantly upgrading, I'm constantly changing things. I'm never doing that to say, hey, oh, look at me, I'm getting this new stuff or I'm getting this new subwoofer, I'm getting this. Yeah, it's fun to share with you guys, absolutely. I love to share with you and show you these new things. But at the same time, I just do that because I like it. I like to experience new products in a hobby that I'm interested in. It just really is one of my favorite parts of this hobby. And another thing I was thinking of is if I have this curiosity, if I have this question as to whether Klipsch is better or SVS is better for me personally, uh, which sound I prefer, is one warmer, is one, uh, are the highs brighter in this one, are the mids richer in this one, and that sort of thing. If I have those questions, there's obviously people out there like you that have the exact same questions. And I'm hoping that with me doing this switch over, I can share my thoughts with you and it may help you in the future if you are debating between Klipsch and SVS and what you think might be best for you. So there you have it guys. I sold an important part of my home theater, the seven floor speakers, and I went in a completely different direction than even I had intended to. So I'm really curious to spend some more time with these speakers, especially once I receive them all, but I'm really curious to see which I prefer to my ears and for my room, Klipsch or SVS. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Please consider subscribing, and if you do, tick the bell icon to be notified about my future videos. I will remind you I have a crazy, powerful, completely unique 24 inch subwoofer coming. And again, um, I went kind of against the grain. That's a little bit of a curveball, I guess. Uh, for those of you that know, I have a Funk Audio LFE 24 Ultra, which is a massive ported subwoofer. Uh, this next subwoofer is going to be similar uh, as far as components and whatnot, but it is a different enclosure. Uh, I went with a sealed enclosure. I, I know, I know, there's those of you out there that think you shouldn't mix ported with sealed, uh, but I think it's actually gonna integrate quite well, and I'll show you why and explain why uh, when I do the video on that subwoofer, so make sure you stay tuned. I'd also really appreciate it if you guys hit that like button. Don't forget to drop your comments down below if you've switched from SVS to Klipsch or vice versa, and as always, stay techy.